Welcome back to Keeping Tabs. I'm Tabitha Croc. Make sure that you check us out on YouTube, Spotify, or iTunes to keep up to date on all the interviews coming your way. I also would like to thank our sponsor, 32 Below, Froyo and more. They are officially open here in Coeur d'Alene, frozen yogurt, adult floats, beer, wine, paninis. Um, so make sure you go check them out, follow them on social media, keep up to date on everything happening. All right, so now enjoy that episode. Okay, I have Bob Norris with me, one of our Kootenai County Sheriff uh, candidates, and we're going to talk a little bit today, um, just ask him a few questions and learn a little bit more about you. So thanks so much for doing this and kind of uh, give a little intro into everyone that hasn't met you or don't know you yet, a little bit about yourself, and then also why are you running for sheriff? Absolutely. My name is Robert Bob Norris, and I am a candidate to be your sheriff. I am currently a Kootenai County Sheriff Search and Rescue member. I do have 30 years of law enforcement experience. I actually have worked, supervised, and managed assets in both patrol and in our jail side. My last unit of assignment was Chief of Law Enforcement Services for three cities. And I am married. I have four children here in Kootenai County. I have two grandchildren here in Kootenai County, two of them currently in Coeur d'Alene schools. And as you can see, uh, I love my North Idaho life uh, with my backyard here. And why am I running? Well, there are several reasons why I'm running, is I want to involve the sheriff's office into our community. Many people have said, Bob, you know, almost two years ago, you started uh, being in the parades and going to some of these events, and why are you starting so early? And I said, well, I don't really view it as starting early for the campaign. It's how I want to involve the sheriff's office into our community. And I'm going to do that through a series of town hall meetings because I want to go to every community in this county and I want to hear what your concerns are and what your issues are. And what your issues and what your concerns are will be our issues and our concerns. To, for an example, in February, we started to do town hall meetings because of the COVID-19 issue. And what the takeaway on that COVID-19 that I wanted people to know was to be calm, be informed, and be prepared. And that the next 30 to 45 days, obviously this was in February, the next 30 to 45 days was going to be very telling about the degree of, of our impact of this COVID-19. So I engaged the community in town hall meetings through this campaign like I'm going to do as your sheriff, not just on election year. I think town hall meetings are a great way to connect with the people so I can hear what's important to you. Another reason why I'm running, it's, uh, I got to tell you, I have read and seen some of the exit interviews from the employees leaving the sheriff's office, and it's not necessarily because of pay. I think that we could all agree that we've worked for some managers before, and we worked for some leaders. And leaders make you want to come to work. Managers make you dread to, uh, to come to work. So we're going to change that philosophy from a, from, a, from a culture of managers to a culture of leaders. And we're going to retain the very, very best of the Kootenai County, both the deputies and the professional staff. So, and you know, I got to tell you, another reason is this growth. Um, whether, whether you like it or not, growth is coming. And I am the only candidate that has experience in dealing with this growth and implementing crime strategies and engaging the public, such as in these town hall meetings. And um, that's the reason why I'm running for sheriff. Well, thank you so much. Uh, tell us a little bit, what's your favorite thing about Kootenai County? Well, you know, I grappled with this one. You know, I was, going, I was going back and forth between Mother Nature and the people. But I got to tell you, it's really the people. Um, because that really is what makes this community. We have a lot of great people in here uh, and a lot of great organizations that want to help the, the um, underprivileged or at-risk people. And it uh, makes for a better overall community. And as your sheriff, I'm... I care about everybody in the community, not just the voters, not just the criminal element. I care about everybody. Perfect. Um, so what is one thing that everyone should know about you? One thing that everybody should know about me is I don't bring any type of California baggage with me. I'm very conservative. I have actually worked stations where people ride their horse to work and ride their horse to town. Los Angeles County is not this, uh, this hub of, of South Central Los Angeles where it's an urban city. 
we actually uh, have stations that people have like a population of 1500, 1800, very similar to Harrison. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've introduced resident deputy programs in some of these communities <clears throat> and they worked out well. We call them town sheriffs. And for that town, like in Gorman, California, it's, a, it's like a town sheriff program. And these are some of the ideas that I bring. I don't bring institutional ideas, but I bring ideas that can help our community here in Cooney County. So I want people to know that I don't bring any California baggage with me. Yeah. I am absolutely conservative and 100%. Uh, That's um, actually funny because I just found that out not too long ago that California's counties are so big that you can have these little small towns that's still in like LA County. It's crazy. Absolutely. I know. Absolutely. So what do you, what are some of your, I know you are very, very busy um, and doing a lot of, um, uh, a lot of campaigning, a lot of things, but what are your like hobbies and things that you like to do? You know what? Love to hang out with my animals. Love to obviously hang out with my family. We like to, to hike, we like to exercise. Well, sometimes we like to exercise. <laughs> There's some days it's, it's a little more difficult than others. Mm -hmm. But uh, hiking, boating, hanging out with our, our animals is uh, really some of the things we really, really like to do and like to explore this great county of ours. Yes. So what's your favorite restaurant in Kootenai County? You know, this was the most difficult question of all. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to know. So maybe this is just selfishly. I want to know what each candidate likes you. I'm like, oh, I've actually never heard of that one. So I grappled with this one. There's so <laughs> many great places that we have here in Gooney County. Um, but I've never had a bad dish at the White House or the Oval Office. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the, the atmosphere is very, very quaint. And it's kind of like that, that old, that Boston bar cheers, you know, where yeah. you might walk in a stranger, but you leave with friends. And, and, uh, I, I gotta tell you, I've never had a bad meal there. At, you know, uh, those are great. That's a great one. I always forget because it's in Post Falls and I live in Coeur d'Alene, but it is, those are gems. Yeah. So if I had to pick one, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's a tight race. Um, those two restaurants obviously owned by the same, same owner. Um, but those are, those are two of uh, our favorites, yes. Yes, perfect. So um, I know that here in Idaho, we're starting to do in stages of lifting the, um, the quarantine, the stay at home, which is, you know, it's good. We're doing in stages. But what, let's just say that things are all lifted. What's the first thing that you want to do um, as soon as you're able to? You know, I think we've uh, taken for granted uh, socializing and, you know, just being able to to have a little bit of freedom and go to the gym because, you know, we all have gym friends and met and yeah. we don't necessarily hang out with outside of the gym, but it's nice to say hi to them and what have you. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to being able to go to our favorite restaurants. I'm looking forward to be able to go to, to do things that we took for granted beforehand um, and just have a little bit of socialization that, uh, you know, human beings need. Uh, we, we need food and water, we need shelter, and we need socialization. I mean, oh, those yeah. are the three things that we need to thrive. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that part of it. Uh, perfect answer. That's, I'm, I'm, right, I'm right there with you. Um, so what is a, what's a piece of advice that you could give a younger you? A piece of advice that I would give a younger me is challenge yourself and challenge yourself out of your comfort zone and identify what your weaknesses are and work three times as hard on your weaknesses than you do your strengths. Mm, perfect. Those are great. Um, so I think I got through all of them, but um, give me a closing message. What is the last thing that you want everyone to know? Um, and you know, one of the reasons that I'm doing this is a, the people that are out on social media that don't necessarily get to see you in the paper or um, on different platforms within our news is, but what is the last piece of advice you would like to give everybody about you or voting? Or also we need to remind everybody that you need to do absentee ballot, which I didn't know until I started talking to you guys. So um, last little plug to give everybody. Well, I can, I can predict that each of the candidates are going to say why they may or may not be the best person for this job. But I don't want you to take my word for it. 
Um, I want you to take the word of um, two of the past general managers of this sheriff's office, and they're called undersheriffs, or what we call their num the number two. And they are the day-to-day -day operation managers of the sheriff's office. And they have both endorsed me, and they have both said that, hey, we have some candidates that are running. Some have experience in both sides of the house. Some have experience in community-based policing. But both of the last two undersheriffs have endorsed me and said it's time for the sheriff's office to be prepared for this growth that we're, we're in. And so I'd like for you to take their word for it. I all, would also like you to take the word of the Cooney County Deputy Sheriff's Association. They conducted a series of interviews, forums, investigations, and they left no stone unturned. And they also came up with an endorsement and that endorsement was for Robert Norris. So I, I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to take the word of the two last general managers of the sheriff's office, the men and women that are actually out there doing the work. I want you to take their word for it. And what you did say is we need to register for an absentee ballot. Um, it does not appear like there will be any traditional polling places. So please register for to vote and vote for what our paper says today. And I know that your readers don't get the CDA print, but here it is. <laughs> Norris for Sarah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Bob. I, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're super busy, but uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Okay, I have Mike Bauer with me today, and he is one of the candidates for the Kootenai County Sheriff. So if you're not aware, um, he will be running against the Republican uh, candidate, uh, Bob Norris. So, and I am right. so excited to chat with you because I want to know more about you, and I want our listeners and people listening on to keeping tabs about you and what you're running for, and uh, just a little bit more about who you are. Um, and right now, we're dealing with a lot of things in the public. Um, and I right. think pieces for me, um, it's something I'm passionate about is public safety. And so I want people to get involved and be educated in voting and voting for the right person that is going to be the best for Kootenai County. So thank you so much for being on and, uh, tell us a little bit about you, a little bit of your background. Okay. Well, I moved here eight years ago from Trot Creek, Montana, where I lived for nine years. I had a hay farm there. I couldn't. <laughs> Couldn't keep up with that. I just uh, needed to really retire because hay farming is not retirement. Prior to that, I did 33 years with the LA County Sheriff's Department, uh, retired as a captain. Uh, my last five years were in command positions, uh, uh, high risk uh, positions mainly, and that's the SWAT teams, the Aero Bureau, uh, canine units, and, uh, and then uh, my last assignment was major crimes, which is detective functions of vice, morals, gambling, uh, uh, your uh, intelligence, terrorism, those sort of functions. At the time, they were all under major crimes bureaus. So they've since been dispersed throughout the department. But at that time, there were joint commands. And uh, when I went into retirement, I thought, well, I'll just have a nice retirement. And I moved to uh, Trout Creek, Montana, and I began working on a a missing deputy who worked for me in 1998. Uh, John Audrey disappeared June 11th, 98. And I began working on that case because I had I found new information and, and I've been working on that case ever since. Uh, I think uh, uh, Sokol over at uh, uh, Spokane Paper put a link to that article on that incident in case anybody's interested. But uh, that kept me in the law enforcement loop. I went down to work with the Homicide Bureau on that case. Uh, I, I got involved in uh, Sanders County, Montana, in uh, two sheriff's races, trying to help a candidate win. Uh, I was a deputy coroner for about a year and a half down there, and I learned how to do circumstantial investigations on death cases. I learned to respect poor Dr. Keene's situation here in, in Kootenai County, because I don't think he has enough resources to do the job. So I stayed in law enforcement. When I moved here, I got involved in land use with uh, Northwest Property. Uh, because they were recategorizing this land. I live in a Carlin area and they were going to call it countryside. I had, if it passed, I had too many horses and I didn't know what to do with my horses. So I went down to the planning commission. One of the first things I did was testify against that ULUC. It eventually failed and it went away. Uh, land use is still an interest of mine because I think your assessments and your uh, 
private property rights are very important. Uh, uh, in Montana, we had no building codes, we had no inspections. Uh, and so in, in nine years, I, I was back in uh, more of a free state. When I moved back to Kootenai County, it was closer to California's uh, real strict codes. And I think I may have rebelled a little bit. I, I think Chris Filios would agree with that. Uh, so when I moved when I moved here, uh, I stayed out of law enforcement. I've watched Sheriff Wolfinger. I have absolutely no problem with what he's done with that department. I uh, I told him uh, at a uh, at a, a meeting with the BOCC that I thought that uh, it was going to be really hard on his people that he and Dan Matos left at the same time. That's that was really my only criticism of him. Uh, he did not step into the sheriff's election. Uh, until very late, uh, he made various analysis, which have been debated and disputed with letters to the editor. I, my, my view is that the, the sheriff ha made a pretty objective analysis of all the candidates, and that's about where I'd like to leave that. But I would just say that uh, the criticisms I heard of Wolfinger and his leadership, I don't think were justified given the resources he has, limited resources in my opinion, and the fact that, um, the department is generally staffed competently enough with the budget they have to do the job. And my goal would be to do it uh, with that limited resources with a smile on my face and not a bunch of heat and uh, pressure on BOCC to give me money that they don't have. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm excited. You lived in Montana. I'm a college, uh, I went to college over in Montana and I'm a Harrison kid. So um you're in my neck of the woods oh okay i didn't know that <laughs> yeah I, was, I graduated went to high, high school and elementary over in harrison and worked uh -huh. all through my years so yeah that's um, that's exciting um so what is you know i know there's a lot of things and there's a lot of things we can kind of talk about i mean we could be here all day talking about different things and how you're better than this or but what you know what's one of the number one things is important to you if you um, step into the role as sheriff? Well, I think it's uh, I think it's a, a, an attitude of not displaying a, a calm attitude, not displaying fear. I'm not afraid of the population growing, and I'm not going to try to uh, get out of my lane and try to do, slow down growth or any other sort of thing. Uh, I, I I'm not all that concerned. Uh, fearful of people being armed in this state because I approve, approved of the uh, law that said uh, uh, people could carry concealed without a permit. I approved of that at the time. Um, I'm a, you know, I have firearms. I'm, I'm not a gun nut per se, but I, you know, I'm very familiar with firearms. And uh, uh, what concerns me a lot is that the COVID situation was based on fear. That everyone is fearful. Uh, the uh, 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 state prison release center based on fear that these criminals are going to come out and get us. Uh, the uh, population growth, uh, having low income housing, bringing people in here uh, who maybe are going to cause the demands on law enforcement. No, law enforcement is here to do the job that the people need, not to manage the people so that the resources work. Government is designed, in my opinion, is my personal philosophy, is w government is here to do what is necessary based on what the people have chosen freely to do themselves, where they want to live and where they want to uh, 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 develop their property or whatever they want to do. And the sheriff's job is to keep them as safe as possible because we don't uh, want them taking the law in their own hands. We want them to feel confident that the sheriff can handle the situation. You saw that with this situation in uh, uh, on Sherman and Coeur d'Alene that it was obvious to me that people felt that it was necessary that they do that. And I would like to see a situation where I had enough staffing and I had the proper deployment, at least in my area. I can't speak for the uh, chiefs. Uh, Post Falls quarterly. I can't speak for them, but for, for the sheriff's area, that I had enough resources that people living in my area didn't feel like they had to do that, that I could handle that problem if we had a threat to the community. That's my job. And I, it's, it's not a failure, but it's, but it is a, it's a disturbing sort of a, a 
uh, phenomenon that's occurred here that people don't feel safe and they feel they have to go out and supplement traditional law enforcement pay for with their tax dollars. And, and so it's a, it, between COVID and that phenomenon, we're really seeing some interesting times, not to mention probably the most unusual sheriff's rates that this county has seen in a lot of people's lifetimes because you don't have your traditional Idaho sheriff like Ben Wolfinger in the race and, 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 and uh, you would say uh, the preferable type of candidate you would want for your sheriff. You have us ruffians showing up uh, who, um, uh, who, who are trying to convince you that you know, we can assume an Idaho uh, philosophy here. Yeah. Um, and in that regard, uh, one of the things I've said to my website and various comments I've made in other forums is, I feel like I got the city pulled out of me in Montana in nine years. I did. I got over here and when it came back at me, I, it was uncomfortable. I know how people feel about their rights and about being left basically alone if that's what they want and law enforcement staying in their lane and not um, encroaching on other people's freedoms. Uh, and that is uh, common sense, uh, humane law enforcement. Okay, no, no excessive use of force. Uh, uh, no, uh, well, everyone just following the golden rule. And that's the sort of philosophy that I would uh, be pursuing uh, first with the management, the captains and, the, and this uh, lieutenant sergeant supervisor team, but with the whole department. I think they're in good shape. Some people say they're just not in good shape at all, and it takes somebody to come in and fix it. Most organizations have staffing problems. Most of them have budget problems. Most of them have retention problems. Most of them pay problems. This is very common across the country. This place here uh, uh, is, in my opinion, those sort of problems under Wolfinger's management are exaggerated in order to take a stand. It's the public's going to support you for that sort of thing. And I, I, I I hate to see that. It's based again on fear that the department's not running right, needs to be repaired. And uh, like I say, I support Wolfinger uh, 100%, and I trust his judgment. Yeah. So um, that's great. Um, yeah, Wolfinger, I've known him since I was a, I remember meeting him when I was like in third grade. Um, we went to the sheriff department as like a field trip. So I've known this guy for a long time too. And um, yeah, I, I agree with you on a, a lot of fronts. Um, what do you think that are kind of the key things that you bring from your past experience that you bring into Kootenai County? You know, um, with, especially for with the police department. When I came on the job, I was 19 years old, worked in the jail. Uh, I learned how to um, survive in a jail setting in which you're greatly outnumbered. You learn to talk to people. You learn to be a people person. You learn to try to find that communication link with people. Um, and that's, that's something that you can learn it. A lot of people seem to have trouble with it, but, uh, but I believe I've got the ability to go over to the BOCC or uh, go into a, a staff meeting or go to a community meeting, whether it's ministers or, or whether it's the uh, political organizations and, and, and communicate with them what it is I'm trying to accomplish. Now, uh, that that was developed over 30 some years i worked on the 84 olympics and we went back to washington dc uh we had to interface with uh, uh with the federal intelligence agencies on threats to uh president reagan on that uh, on that project and you learn to um respect and appreciate other law enforcement agencies ability to help you do your job and how we all need to get along uh and then up here in north idaho i see that it's a certain element wants no federal involvement here and it's that is just not a workable situation it's just not realistic and and so i have a general overall experience of what i would consider to be the management and the leadership aspects of law enforcement which i think would be helpful here uh, i wouldn't say that uh, you know, I uh, arise uh, head and shoulders above Ben because I don't know what his problems are inside that organization. I'm not allowed to go in there right now. I'm not allowed to go in there and look around. Uh, I wish I were, 
But uh, I think you saw in the paper that uh, the sheriff presumptive is allowed in and he's working inside that organization on some sort of a, uh, uh, some sort of a uh, transition team. And I, I would just say that we've all been to civics class and we know that you're not elected until the general election. Uh, and the public is confused by my candidacy as an independent because they thought historically here when the Republican wins, that's it, everybody get out of the way. Just get out of the way. And I, and I feel it and I see it. I don't want to fight against it. I understand it. But if come November election I win, um, it's going to be a very interesting, interesting situation uh, down there at the sheriff's office when I walk in and they've already transitioned to somebody else. That's what I find a little odd. And that is really my concern is the sheriff needs to be nonpartisan. Judges, nonpartisan. Why should the law enforcement officer be told what to do by a party, whether it's Democrat or Republican? A sheriff should be neutral, has to represent all the people, both sides. I went to uh, uh, a celebration of life. Some people didn't like that. I went to the Liberty thing. Some people didn't like that. But I, re I would represent everybody in this county, regardless of party. And yet I see and I have seen how this party is uh, the elected official ramrodded by one party, and I have specific individual differences of opinion about some of their decisions. I, I don't agree with, with that, with that uh, party on every issue. Uh, and I think that they need to be more uh, broadly, uh, uh, their decisions need to be more broadly uh, uh, held than they are. Uh, and so the sheriff, in my opinion, needs to be nonpartisan. I'd, I'd really like to see that structurally. I don't know if the state would ever approve it because it gives up too much control uh, to the local uh, uh, political apparatus in, in Idaho. Uh, it, it's, it's a bit complicated, but it's just my view that the sheriff should not be bending his knee to the chairman of a political party any political party. The sheriff represents the people. Mm, perfect. Well, let's ask a couple fun questions since we're, we got a lot of serious stuff going on here. Um, so what is your favorite restaurant here in Kootenai County? Um, I like Anthony's if I want to spend $50 for lunch. And I'm, I, I took Bob Norris to lunch at Anthony's when I first wanted to talk to him about his candidacy. And I paid, and he owes me a lunch. Yes, he he owes me a lunch, 50 bucks. Uh, I, like, uh, I like Moon. I like Moon on Sherman. I, I think that it's just the coolest, most easygoing place. Uh, I've been to uh, Wolf Lodge a lot with people from out of town. That's the, how you immerse people in the country to, uh, you know, a Western type of, a, of, of an atmosphere here in Idaho. But um, if I just want to just relax, um, and uh, and uh, have a I have a burger and I, I I'd probably pick Moon. Yeah, I, I'm 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 the same. All three of those are fantastic local restaurants. I used to like Carlin Bay Resort, but <laughs> yeah, that's another issue, isn't it? That is another issue. <laughs> it was right, it's right down the street, and I used to be able to walk to it. So perfect. Well, what about um? We know that you like obviously horses and you have been, you know, haying. What are some of your fun hobbies? What are things that you like to do um, outside of all of your hard work? I'm a private pilot. I have been since about 96. I built an experimental aircraft over in Montana on my airstrip in Montana. And I actually, I built it and flew it. I flew it 300 hours. It's an RV-6 on my website under uh, gallery. If you go to all the way down, you'll see uh, me flying in that plane. I had someone take a picture. Uh, from another airplane, and I, uh, and, and until you build something and fly in it yourself, you really, you really come to terms with uh, your mortality. Trust me. It, so flying has been a hobby of mine for a long time. I, I don't have time right now to do that anymore. Uh, I kept my plane in Burt Rattan's hangar over at Coeur d'Alene Airport for quite a while, and I've flown all over this area, all over uh, Kootenai County, and looked at it from the air in my plane. And, that's, and, and that is what led me to my view that population is not a problem here. This is a huge county. We've got 165,000 people. 
well, all of Montana has a million and all of Idaho has 1.8 million. You know, we got room here. We just have to manage where we put them. That's up to the cities and that. But, so anyway, the flying is uh, was important to me. Uh, I, I have uh, uh, 16 ducks. I have Rowan ducks and I have a few uh, Pekin ducks. And I, they, t they take up a lot of my time. I really like them. They're happy to see me and, uh, uh, and they're fun. Uh, I have horses. We have uh, German Shepherd dogs. Uh, we, we um, uh, my wife, she, my wife got ill recently and she's getting better now, but uh, she used to ride all these uh, roads around here and she would ride for hours and hours around here. She really loves that. She'd go over on the trails, uh, rails to trails, uh, which is a beautiful, beautiful uh, trail out there. Really nice. And, uh, and uh, we really enjoyed that. Usually out of that bridge, just uh, east of Harrison, little parking lot there. And, uh, and we've seen moose. We've seen just about everything on that trail. Uh, just beautiful uh, to get away in the middle of where there's people. You're on a really nice, uh, uh, relaxing trail. And and running, I've done running. Uh, um, other than that, uh, you know, our, our place, 11 acres, a lot of maintenance, uh, taking care of the, uh, the, uh, the horses, uh, cleaning up after them, uh, fetching hay out of Montana over Thompson Pass, uh, you know, to, to, my uh, winter feed, um, just uh, you know, working around the place. I've done that, but I have always investigated either on phone or going down south, looking for my missing deputy and looking for several other missing people who are associated with that case. And so that that really is my passion. And uh, until recently, uh, I was uh, how should I put it? Godfathering uh, the missing deputy's daughter. She's passed away. She was found shot to death in Idaho Falls recently. And that situation, still unresolved, uh, has, uh, has kind of thrown my project for a loop. It's, it's, it's very distressing. Uh, and she and her, and her father's dog are on my website in, uh, in the uh, gallery section uh, when she was five years old and she was with that dog. Anyway, uh, that, that project still takes up a lot of my time. I have boxes and boxes of work investigative stuff and I do it pro bono I do it for free hundreds of hours but it's almost a rebate to his family and the citizens of LA County that I'm doing this to try to solve that uh, situation so what I'm really gathering is that you don't like to be retired I we're all going to get old right and if we don't use our minds we're going to you know, we're going to get rusty. And so I, I, I read a lot. I read every night. I read, uh, I can read a book and usually in about two weeks at about maybe 15 minutes a night. And then I let my brain process what I read. And then I look for something else the next day in that book. Finally, I finished that book. And I love books about history. I love books about Montana history, especially uh, because when I lived over there, I really came to study the formation of that, that territory, Idaho territory. Washington and uh, and then uh, Utah uh, territories and how they all merged and then how they were formed into states when they became states and what sort of government structures they tried to work under. They all had experience with vigilantes taking taking uh, public justice. With that, you know, uh, that should be a hot topic, but it's not, I guess. But. Uh, Public justice and the people assuming the role of law enforcement when there are elected and paid officials and jails and that that that's a very that's a very uh, uh, troubling uh, situation for me in that respect because of the history of the West has uh, not only tolerated it but they have celebrated it in certain places. Kind of interesting from a professional law enforcement point point of view. Um, I think it needs. I think it deserves study. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, one other fun question is, what is one life lesson you've learned the hard way? I've been married too many times, and I think, I think some of it was my fault. <laughs> and, and I think that, I think I probably uh, uh, could have been a little kinder in those situations instead of um, reacting, being a reactionary, I could have been more proactive. I, I wasn't a big fan of marriage counseling. <laughs> uh, part of it was the job. I, when I worked down south, 
it was no, it was 24 hours a day job. When I worked as a captain of SCB, I think for three years, I think I didn't sleep four or five hours a night, and I was gone on every call out, over 300 uh, call outs uh, uh, that we had there. High risk is Lawrence, and so I became a workaholic, and that is a big toll on your family if you if you can't um, uh, pay uh, appropriate attention and and uh, you know uh, nurture a relationship. And so I think that's what I've learned the hard way is that I could have done better. Now, my current wife and I have been married almost 20 years now. 20 years is generally my record. And, uh, and, I, and I love her dearly. Uh, she doesn't deserve this uh, health problem she has. Uh, I do my best to take care of her. And uh, I'm uh, trying to mend my ways. Fantastic. All right, so we, we have talked a little bit about, you know, there is a lot going on right now um, with social justice. There is a lot going on with COVID. I mean, it's just, it's struggling for anybody within politics or law enforcement, mm -hmm. uh, anything along those lines. And um, being a law enforcement daughter, I, I'm very passionate about people getting in there and actually like making a difference by, you know, getting into politics or just registering and becoming a voter and voting for the right person that will right. do for our, um, you know, for North Idaho and for Kootenai County and for our public safety, um, you know, maybe reiterate like how important it is to get involved and be an educated voter. Well, of course, um, uh, we're, we're, like I said earlier, we're, we're living in very interesting times and uh, there's a lot to learn from this. Uh, how do we deal with a pandemic? How do we deal with uh, the various opinions of the conflict between freedom and safety it's a real it's it's a it's suppose it's a historic uh uh dilemma you know for for uh government uh, people to study is how do you uh, how do you uh make people feel like uh the government is doing a good job and a safe job uh and and, and, and convince them that they don't have to take things into their own hands. So you saw that down on Sherman, you see that with COVID, certain people, you know, are, want to recall Governor Little because they think he was abusive in his orders. And that, that, you know, that, this conflict is, uh, it's worth studying. I don't know that there's an answer to it. I, I look to see what uh, Sheriff Wolfinger's doing. He's getting paid to do this. He's a law enforcement leader. What has he said? His position has been a per, fairly strict enforcement, and a lot of people are upset about that. A lot of people are, and some uh, candidates for this sheriff's this primary, um, uh, but, you know, you uh, discuss that argument a lot that uh, COVID was not supposed to keep us in our homes. It wasn't, you know, the government didn't have the right uh, statistics. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, lack of confidence in the public health system and in uh, the law enforcement. And my position on, on uh, for example, I have a written position on tracing. You know, should a sheriff's deputies be involved in that process? And my position is no, because they're not trained and they don't have the equipment. And they are critical elements of public safety. I think that that's a public health issue. And if they have safety issues to try to accomplish that, we can certainly accompany them using the training and equipment we've been given to help them be safe while they do it. But, uh, but when I see enforcement actions on the part of uh, law enforcement specifically, um, that, that, that concerns me. If Panhandle Health had a team of people going to these parks, or going to various places and, and, and that they were a health professional um, uh, uh, wanting these people to not uh, congregate or in a social distance bed or whatever it was and they had difficulties doing that and of course call the sheriff well come on help give you a hand but I don't think that was necessarily the sheriff's fault. Perfect all right so um, we're about out of time um, you know <clears throat> leave us with a little bit of a last little you know nugget to tell us. Um, okay you no know, <laughs> I <clears throat> I've been uh, encouraged to, um, let's say, uh, tone it down a little bit. I've been encouraged to be more, uh, uh, let's say, constructive in my criticism of, uh, of other candidates, and, uh, and I'm working on that. Um, it's hard to do that when there's things that need to be said that aren't being said, and so in that respect, uh, if I've uh, offended anybody, I apologize, but 
uh, one of the things that I'm going to start working on is what I said last August when I made my candidate statement. I said that the sheriff and in, either one of us who wins, and I don't know Justin Nagel, I don't know what his uh, financial situation is. Bob and I don't need the money. Neither one of us need the money. And my uh, uh, challenge to Bob, no matter which ones of which one of us wins, is that I said I would give at least ten thousand dollars of my sal salary to local charity every year, and probably more. That's my feeling, and I believe my under sheriff would do the same thing to give back to the community because uh, it, 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 you know, it's the right thing to do. So I put out a challenge to Bob. You agreed to the same thing, and then the community can appreciate that they get a little rebate off of their property taxes, and the and the community gets gets some uh, charitable uh, work. I I'm probably going to start with uh, food banks. You know, that's really a critical issue here. I'm going to start with uh, uh, with some of the uh, 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 women shelters. The uh, violent shelters really need help. Um, and uh, you know, I think I think that message needs to get out there that either Bob or I, whoever wins, really um, would be in a situation to be very generous uh, with uh, local local charities, especially. Okay. Well, thank you so much for giving me your time today, um, and uh, good luck. Okay. Thank you very much. It was great meeting you.